What's good everybody? The first mentor I ever had in the media industry was one of my first personal coaching clients, Tanmay Bhatt. Back when YouTube didn't pay me much, when I was just starting out this whole YouTube game, I used to fund my startup by going to people's houses and helping them with their weight loss journeys. I'd helped Tanmay back in the day. And in return, he mentored me through the initial part of my career. All India Bakchod back in the day was the top media company in the world of the Indian internet. So in this episode, we've broken down the story of AIB, the startup story, the business story of AIB. We've spoken about the whole phase where AIB got disintegrated. We've spoken about some dark topics that Tanmay hasn't spoken about earlier in any other interview. So you guys are going to enjoy this episode. But also keep in mind, this man is a fantastic conversationalist. He's got one of the best brains that I've seen in the media industry and some aspects of this entire podcast are going to blow you away either intellectually or it's going to reveal a side of Tanmay that you never knew existed. Also keep in mind one whole section of it we've spoken about Tanmay's battles with fitness, with weight, our whole journey of training each other, me training him to be physically fit, him training me to become the best version of myself as a media industry professional. A very intellectual episode, a very fun episode because he's also one of India's top stand-up comics. So I hope you guys enjoy yourself. Tanmay Bhatt on The Ranveer Show. Tanmay Bhatt. Yes. Sir. It's your face, dude. It's your face on this couch. <laughs> All the positivity creeping oh, up on you. Oh my god. Huh? I remember when you used to train me, it used to be, he used to come to my house at 9 a.m. <laughs> where I am regretting my whole life. <laughs> and he would come with like, hey, it's a new day. Let's have fun. Uh, just to hate it. I remember sometimes jumping on you while you were sleeping saying, get up, oh, get the fuck up. Fuck. Get the fuck up. Dude, do you remember we had a video of you jumping on my bed? You remember <laughs> the thing that we did? And then I bumped yeah, my head and yeah, hurt myself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, and, I, and there was multiple moments in that training phase where I thought you're gonna die because mm. we used to do stupid shit. We used like to do that. stupid shit. We used to, that was that was a fun time. Yeah. What uh, was that whole experience of being trained by be a biceps? It's fucking terrible. Please go. <laughs> nobody ever trained with him. Yeah, but also also Tan Tan had got into some sexy ass shape back in the day. Back in the day. Yeah. Mm. Okay. I'm going to dive into the most serious aspects of this podcast. Mm. What's the best and worst thing? about your life right now? Oh, ho, ho, ho. Uh, the best thing is, actually the best and worst thing is the same thing. The best thing is that I, I'm so neck deep in productivity now. It's been, like I was telling you, 15 days, 15 videos. I, it's been a year of not having any motivation to do anything. And now this is my routine. I wake up at 2 p.m. I feel it. Yeah, I wake up at 2 p.m. Mm. Okay, not 9 a.m. I wake up at 2 p.m. Between 2 to 5, I'm either going through writing new jokes or figuring out what's the video I want to shoot tonight um, or doing this sort of stuff, figuring out meetings. Then at 6, between 5 to 6, I get ready to go. I have an open mic. every. I have a show I do every day at 7 p.m. Mm. I booked a room in car for 50 days. Every day I go and do stand-up. And I rap at nine. Then if some comics are around, I either hang out with them for an hour. Then I come back home at 11. Then I come stream. Then I come shoot. Then I listen to the hour that I did. Then by 5, 6 a.m., I'm then ready to pass out, which really it becomes seven by the time I sleep. Mm. Then I wake up again at two. So this is my <laughs> life. My life is, uh, it's pretty, This people underestimate the power of a routine. Hmm. A routine is amazing to have. Hmm. A routine gives you clarity. So now literally whenever someone's like, hey, let's do a meeting for this. I'm like, either you come to my house <laughs> or let's do a video call yeah. because meetings are a waste of everybody's time. Especially in Mumbai. Espe yeah, it's just a waste because every meeting is, the, you just add 90 minutes to it hmm. automatically because of travel. Hmm. So I'm like, I don't have time for it. I have I've lost one year of my life. I need to make it hmm. count now. So are you happy yeah. in life right now? Oh, immensely happy. This is the happiest I've been. Because once you hit rock bottom and then you re, 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 uh, uh, discover enthusiasm for life again, it's, um, once you realize this is the maximum low you can reach and you still survive when you're alive, mm. then, uh, then you realize that happiness is not about this thing. So I'd like I was telling you the best, this is the best thing about my life. Mm. The worst thing about my life is also the same. Uh, sometimes I fear that I've learned nothing from the mistakes I made from the past, which is being able to make time for 
myself and recognizing that my self worth is not in work but it's beyond that like uh, what like can you explain this dude why why i'm going to ask you also this right why is that all our self worth is comes down to productivity why is success in career mm. so important mm. um why is it that um, there's an element of masculinity also in mm. into this why is success equals to career success mm. only 100%. why is in success measured in happiness uh, what first of all there's no thing as happiness <laughs> happiness is a journey and not a destination yeah. why is success uh, if you have a great career if you made a lot of money if you got enough fame power etc etc why is it not i have been a good friend and a loyal family member and etc 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 this world was designed that your your metric of success is equal to that mm. which a lot of us um, often forget to question mm. so that is also the worst part of life yeah. where i'm like i also i also feel that that's something i picked up from you while training you i just see you hustling even on sundays like i remember training in the morning and then you were like okay it's 11 i'm going to office now yeah and uh, so that's something i picked up from you the other place i connected with you i probably have not told you this the first time i'm telling you this because you know i make it emotional oh my fucking <laughs> god i will throw this on your face <laughs> But the this is where I connected with you. I have a point to make about point one. Okay, continue. Yeah, hmm. place I connect with you is daddy issues. Daddy issues. Yeah. Daddy issues are the best guys. Yeah, I oh, think. Oh man, you know there's a saying: all the best cowboys always have daddy issues. Oh man, we'll get. I'll address both of these things. Yeah. So, but uh, I was actually close to your dad while I was training you. Oh man. After training you, I'd go to his house and he would encourage me that yeah, push, push, turn my harder. All my friends are close to my dad, <laughs> except for me. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and and I'll tell you what, dude. Where where there's daddy issues, there's also motivation to kill it in your career. That's what it stems from. No, it's it's not that. Maybe for you, it's the whole like weight loss thing. For me, it was like the career. But it's the it's a parallel journey. Yeah. So, one, why is there a need for me to go to office at eleven o'clock? Right. Grew up as a fat kid. Um, realized that if I if I don't have looks, what can I have that I can own? Hmm. So I was like, oh, we got to study, 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 study. Then when school was over, it was like, oh, I still don't have looks. What can I own? Mm. And it was like, oh, extracurricular. Let's fucking go to every festival mm. possible, right? And once uh, college got over, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm still, I'm still ugly. <laughs> what do I, what do I, what can I own now? Yeah. So then I was like, oh, let's, let's start writing. Let's get into media. Let's start making money. Mm. Uh, and once that happened, then, then I was like, oh, I'm. This is also, I guess, I'm just still one amongst a million other people. Mm. Cool. Let's do do something that's cool. Mm. Where can I get more attention? Mm. What is an immediate way of gratification? It's an audience <laughs> laughing at you, which is their way of saying they like you. Mm. So it's not a good thing. The mm. the need to hustle. This is just so he keeps saying hustle, hustle. It's not a good thing. When remember when you when you're hustling. I'll tell you what. I don't think it's a good thing, but I when, think it's important at twenty two. Yeah. When when you're hustling, mm. you're essentially saying that I want. I want this so badly. I'm willing to sacrifice everything else for yeah. it. That tells you there's a void that you're yeah. trying to fill by getting this. Uh, it's a good. It's a good way to live. I think there is no point to life uh, generally. Uh, so you create games and then you play the game extremely well. So yeah. if your game is you want a YouTube channel to hit a million, yeah. if you want to set up your own business empire or whatever it, it is, then just play that game yeah. for which you know you need to hustle. I feel the meaning of life is. Whatever you want the meaning to be, dude. So I feel for like at this stage, how you are like hundred percent, yeah, hundred percent. You know how how this stage you're like, dude. Success is beyond just career success. Yeah, but it's different at different ages. I'm sure like yeah. when you were 25, when you were like building AIB and all, dude, your mindset was different. Yeah, but so mid I, mid 20s Indian guys, yeah, a lot of them are locked in on their work, and I think it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Mm. I, this it's not a problem. You're absolutely right. Meaning of life is whatever you make of it. Mm. Uh, I would like to I like to articulate it this way. Mm. meaning of life is life the point of life is to create goals mm. and you should only create goals which helps you attain flow all right you should use the jpeg of flow here uh <laughs> for let me tell you for those who don't know what flow is flow is when the challenge that you pose to yourself and the skills that you have are matched if the challenge is too difficult and that doesn't match your skill then you will be anxious if the challenge is too easy and your skills overpower that then it will be too easy then you'll get you'll you'll be stuck in boredom mm. flow is when there's good challenge and your skills match it then you achieve flow and if your goals have this flow then you're likely yeah. to continue on to this thing 100%. and every every time you achieve one goal you got to find the next goal and be like 
how yeah. can i can i find my flow here yeah which for a lot of youtubers is that single piece of content that they're putting up yeah. they go into flow about content pieces so yeah. for example on the edit table i feel a lot of flow sometimes if yeah. i'm creating motivational video yeah. to throw in positivity see you guys next time we leave i can't <laughs> and motivation uh-huh. into the world yeah. i go into a flow yeah dude yeah uh want to ask you straight up mm-hmm. uh three worst moments of your life three worst moments of my life ooh um i'll tell you i'll tell you i'll tell you one of them was 12th standard results came out i got 65% as remember i was outside um, <laughs> i was outside meeting by um, the commerce section jisme ac hua karta tha tabhi wahan pe humko exams ke mark sheets wagera mile the and i got 65% and i didn't want to go back home hmm. so i was i had all, all my all my pocket money saved I was binge eating my feelings away. I was eating Frankie after Frankie and crying. Hmm. Can you imagine what that Frankie wala standing there like? Is my <laughs> is my Frankie so bad that you are <laughs> sobbing? It makes no sense. Uh, and I didn't go home. I just I refused to take any calls. Tabi mobile na na aata. So my parents were calling saying how much did you get? Uh, and I, I was I scored ninety percent in my tenth. So hmm. that's like a dramatic drop. Hmm. Uh, that was one fucking terrible uh, day. Second one. I'm trying to place a second one. um ha huh. second one was i think um i think my m- my parents sobbing after the sachin lata controversy and asking me why do you want to continue comedy can you quit that i think was pretty terrible i think it just the stress that my parents went through my dad had a bypass and he was still like why is this still happening to my son cuz the roast had happened just a year before that so in order to explain to them that my life choices will affect you at some point that was pretty hard and the third one is letting all the ab employees go last year that was i think that was uh, i think pretty terrible i think it was the first time the four of us were in a room with the whole office and i broke down i was just crying and and the thing is that there was no way to explain to them um except for saying that this is this is it guys there's nothing else we can do for a minute they didn't even believe me and uh, that was the first time i cried in front of everyone that was pretty bad but now in hindsight I look at that moment and I feel like every single person who worked at AIB has managed to get a much higher paying job uh from AIB is extremely happy right now they're killing it each some of them have founded new companies other people are you know just living a great solid life um which I think to some extent was the was the aim with AIB always want I wanted to be the Ogilvy of comedy in that sense which is mm. anybody who came to ab once they leave it's like you've been through an institution it's like mm-hmm. getting another degree mm-hmm. so that was that felt pretty good a year later after seeing all this i feel like oh wow everyone's killing it mm-hmm. so now if i call them back now saying hey you want i'm i want to do sketches for my channel again they're like i'd love to do it but i don't want to do this full t- i have a good life now I, and i would never want them to go back to you know a year ago i think that's pretty epic i love that I love uh, I love meeting people when they're on the cusp of exploding mm. and then working with them for a year or two and then watch them go. And I think this is some one of the things I've learned in the last year is India has a very zero sum mentality. India believes that some one person's success means you're taking success from other people. Mm. People don't realize that everyone can be successful, everyone can make yeah. money. Mm. Um you just need to put your skin in the game and help them and um you know so th- for example the aib social media team they started their own company called one hand clap uh, which now i'm a part of um, mm. i invest in their company so now they handle aib social media also but they also do their own thing mm. the kids are 22 23 year olds and nobody um i nobody uh, ever imagined that these guys would they refuse to work without each other yeah they formed their own company and aib was in debt Hmm. for a, for if we still in debt in the last year and they started their own company and they helped us repay a part of that debt they were just like you know the ab was our home and what so kind of debt in cross dude we had overnight we lost all brands disappeared and we we weren't a funded company right we were literally operating whatever money that would come in we would reinvest into the company we were first draft karte the we funded chintu the movie chintu was supposed to play at festivals it we were discussing chintu uh, getting bought out by some ott platform overnight all of it disappeared so suddenly we were looking at our bank statements last year in october we were like we only have money till like november end we don't have more um so we were in severe debt we had projects that we had shot but we couldn't put it out mm. 
which meant that production cost has gone already you mm-hmm. know we were in the middle of uh, making a show uh, for amazon so a lot of stuff had already happened for which we had already put forward the money so we were in debt we owed a lot of people a lot of money does that hurt you somewhere right now also that fact no not really in the sense that hurt me as in it's it's maths dude you just have to pay people who who work for you yeah. um but it's it's been immensely great fascinating learning experience cuz you i was so lucky that everybody who we owed money to mm-hmm. was like it's you guys i trust mm-hmm. you guys you guys will pick yourself up and be there and luckily for akash and team shout out to akash akash and team they they were like it's fine our money is your money and so we got i we got really, we got super lucky with them hmm. um so yeah are you are you in touch with the boys ashish kamba rohan of course okay yeah i mean we're all in touch and everyone's doing their own things now. everyone's doing their own thing everyone's we also we, i mean chintu is happening we have a show coming out on amazon um the ab youtube channel isn't doing anything as of now but there's other projects happening there's a movie that's going on floor from ab first draft in february um i'm working on two movies which is mm. going to be from presented by ab so there's a lot happening so everyone's in touch and everything yeah um but everyone's very busy also just doing our own thing rohan ashi just had specials that they shot for yeah, amazon yeah. i'm working on my special and i'm a gamer now apparently <laughs> yeah. yeah we'll get we'll get to your gaming channel mm. dude but again going back to like this whole phase mm. um this third moment you spoke about mm. was this the darkest of the three Yeah, I think so. I think um I think it was because I I understand the kind of, you know, place I hold beer by some and monkey in my heart. Yeah. It's like my baby and I'm sure AIB was the same for you, dude. Yeah, it was darkest because it was in one moment I started questioning my whole life, mm-hmm. right? Because I'd spent a large part of the last 10 years building building this company and I spent a large part of the last 10 years with the people that I was working with. So for a period of like one two months, when I didn't have a place to go, I didn't have an office to go to. I would just lit. This was the couch that I used to just sleep on. I would wake up. I'd come here. I'd sit. I'd eat poha and anda for lunch. Then I would sleep on this couch. And I'd wake up again at five. I'd eat and I go to sleep. I didn't have anything to do. It was not only sad, but it was also revelatory for me because I just for the first time went like, oh, if I don't have an office to go to, what am I even a person? and that's what i meant by this was the best year of my life because i understood so much about myself um so yeah, it was darkest because it was also it was extremely dark but it was also extremely enlightening mm. the fact that i realized that do i not have a am i not a person if it's not my work mm. am i do i not deserve to you had a reinvention a personal reinvention yeah i was like me tan me bhatu like after 8 months i was like i'm a person i can do things and just because this has happened doesn't mean you can't get up mm-hmm. so 10 years of your life right so jab aapki puri auqat aapke kaam mein rehti hai na aur jab kaam mein nikal jata hai then you're like mai meri auqat kya hai duniya mein that's that's the question that i that i yeah. asked myself so it was extremely dark but the fact that i'm still able to get up today and still yeah. start doing shit yeah it's that's pretty fucking amazing i i know you as a guy hmm. i know that you're genuinely a respectful person Huh. But a lot of people, you know, when they read things online, they make assumptions about a human being. Oh, like that? Yeah. Oh man, I think so. Here's the thing I've learned. Yeah. Okay, I've been in a, I've been in the news consistently for five years. If there's one thing I've learned, everything you read in the news, not necessarily the truth, mm. right? Here's how the news boils down. I don't want to make any comments about everything, anything. Yeah. But the news, news is news follows views, right? So mm. it's no longer about the truth. Mm. the truth is extremely complicated and nuanced mm. and the news is meant to be sexy and fast mm-hmm. the truth is not sexy and fast the mm. truth takes very long to understand mm. it's like about kashmir right if someone came and said hey tell me about kashmir and you are like okay here's what i have read about kashmir let's go back 60 70 80 years ago when india as a country was being formed this person is like mereko abhi kisi bulana hai why have we gone back 60 70 years ago mm. but if you want if you want some if you want to understand something in depth it requires context because the news doesn't have space for mm. news abhi share karo abhi views karo um so i would suggest for most people to stop looking at the news as the absolute truth start using your using your brains first of all don't consume every piece of news that you see 
and what the, what this does is it makes people start judging people thinking that everybody is either black or white mm. there is no gray mm. fact is everybody is gray mm-hmm. nobody is black mm-hmm. or nobody is white mm-hmm. um aaj we are ready to get angry on people without thinking for a second because hum sab gussa hai isliye kyunki humko bhi like chahiye mm. i think the internet fundamentally changed the day retweets were invented the day there were like buttons in the comment section of e- youtube and instagram because that's it started giving people an incentive to behave in a way that could get them likes and not react genuinely to anything um so aaj matlab for example chetan magat kuch tweet karega hum sab log chaku banduk leke taiyar hai ki hum attack kare even if it even if what he's saying makes sense we are just ready because we have you need there is a section of people who have you need dimensionally judged him for whatever it, it is so i would just recommend people who read the news and judge people don't 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 do that it's it's unhealthy for you it makes your uh, sense of judgment impaired and it's um, not the entire perspective it's the not the it's not the entire perspective and i can tell you this much right the people who are least accepting of other people's flaws uh, are unaware of their own flaws so anybody who i who i met who would be extremely judgmental all it means is they have not introspected and thought about yourself because if you have high empathy for others it just means you are also self aware mm. it's like you meet someone who fucked up and if you're like a how can how the fuck can you fuck up you're a fucked up person all it means is you've not thought about your own fuck ups mm. so to me anybody who showed me very little empathy around that time i i've now realized that oh you have your own processing to do i feel bad for you तो खुद के बारे में सोच के आ जा फिर बात करते तो तब तक तो गाली देना तो कर ले बट लॉन्ग टर्म गेम मैं जीत रहा हूँ वॉट वुड यू हैव डन डिफरेंटली एड ए आई बी लाइक बैक इन द डे वेन यू स्कैन इट अगेन थ्री थिंग्स ओ वन डिफिनेटिव थिंग आई डन इज हायर सी ओ हु वॉज जस्ट फोकस्ड ऑन रनिंग द कंपनी आई थिंक आई थिंक आई वॉज टू रफ अराउंड दी एजेस आई डेंट नो आई वॉज टू कॉट इट्स लाइक यू हासिल ओवर पावर्ड यू हासिल सी द थिंग इज आई थिंक that a, a great ceo focuses on running the company right but it is but i was also i'm also an artist mm. so a lot of the times my judgment was impaired because my brain is not focused on i'm not able to prioritize things effectively i think as an artist it was tougher to run a company because your priorities aren't isn't every isn't the company all the time mm. it's also as an artist artist you're also also thinking about yourself mm-hmm. it wasn't a company that was about me it was mm. a company that was about 40 other people and they have had four founders and what not so yeah that's one thing i think find people who are excellent at what they do mm. you don't need to do everything mm. you know delegate delegate find people who are uh, make things not about you you know mm. i also realized that as a as a as a leader i was extremely insecure which is why i think in hindsight like like in what matlab yaar how do how do i explain insecure about your own capabilities insecure about my own capabilities which would manifest in ways in front of your employees in a way that you might not necessarily for example a leader is supposed to be extremely giving extremely mm. putting everybody else first the best leaders are those who bring out 20x from people right but when the leader himself is not extremely secure how can he help someone else be secure right i think i was insecure i think i i was insecure as a person and i i don't think for a i learned those lessons extremely late like if you talk to folks at yavi they'll tell you that my managing us in the first 3 years and in the last 2 years was completely different uh so i think it's the one thing if most bad bosses are bosses who are themselves insecure mm. the best bosses are people who have already figured out you know this these are my strengths these are my weaknesses everybody is a person everybody is here to do better but more i woke th- like huh? people who are more woke make better leaders not not woke i think woke is a terrible term i think people who are more secure about themselves um make better bosses because i think in most cases managers who are cruel are just compensating for their own insecurity mm. I don't think people are inherently bad. I think people act bad, um, and that's a manifestation of their insecurity. I think putting employees down means you're trying to put yourself up. Means you're trying to protect your own, mm. uh, you know, sense of identity. I'm gonna tell you something that I've not told you before. I've probably told you versions of it. I feel like even training you 
Hmm. I consider that a huge blessing back in the day because hmm. I genuinely feel like you were my first mentor in this career. Hmm. Uh and you That's gave me terrible news. <laughs> Dude no you hmm. gave me you gave me opportunity. I remember hmm. being at 1500 2000 subscribers hmm. and I just wrote you an emotional mail about how Oh you were drunk and you messaged me on Facebook I remember. This. <laughs> bro just give me one chance bro I'll change your life. Yeah. I was like kon hai bar bar message kar raha hai aaj aaj chal. Did I have a positive impact on you? Uh I think so. I think that that period was that period was also i think i learned to be self sufficient after that period right it was we did keto for the first time that period of the one or two years where i learned that oh you know fitness is not it's not rocket science you mm. can understand if you're just disciplined yeah so that period it helped me it helps me today today i don't need i don't need a yeah. trainer in in that yeah, sense it's yeah. i need someone to spot me yeah but i largely know the science behind it and i think I think I was also very extremely curious at that point. I remember working out I would keep asking you questions yeah. but it's, it's just great to know to what you are to just learn shit. So I think that period was great. I learned it's like I did a diploma in fitness yeah. or at least basics of being healthy. So that period was ex- it's yeah. a life skill that I think everyone should have. I yeah. think everyone should get a trainer who it doesn't mind your curiosity not you no one should get it um, no dude uh, it it was the same for me it was like i feel like if i gave you fitness knowledge you uh, gave me a lot of knowledge about early how to eat mindsets. and put on weight no no you you <laughs> dude uh, okay I, and i'm going to be honest here with you um hmm. uh, i'm going to tell please, you this straight up honest, and it might be offensive to you it's okay. very offensive already uh don't sit on my couch and diss yeah. me you dude I, i think i think you're I'll slap you i i think you don't give yourself enough credit and i think you're a self deprecatory guy and Haan, that's fine of course of course it's so much more funny than funnier to be self deprecatory <laughs> dude but um, i've picked up a lot of my early career mindsets which mm. when i look back those were key kind of character building things that paid off in the long run samajh gaya yaar i really changed your life yeah. and i'm i want to change my life okay okay <laughs> okay i mean now you're down playing it i can change your life okay no, it's a no, whole you didn't you didn't change my life but <laughs> You gave me mindset. अरे समझ गया यार समझ गया बहुत amazing चीज किया यार I'm the best. Do you consider yourself a positive or a negative person? Now I'm a lot more positive. But, But like I was gen- yeah I was generally generally I'm a very cynical person. I think it's very difficult to be a comedian <laughs> and be positive at the same time. Yeah I I agree with you dude. There's something I've seen with a lot of stand up comics I've met. Why is that? Dude I just think and you might disagree with me. I think the more life happens to you the more naturally cynical you become <laughs> because you realize ki duniya kya ma kuch jagah hai you know what i'm saying um but i think the only thing that helps you out of bad situations is being positive i think being negative doesn't achieve anything being negative is great being cynical is great for comedy hmm. <laughs> um but yeah i think being positive helps you get out of stuff yeah. um if you're a cynical person it just have two positive friends who will who will compensate yeah. for that shit Dude, how long back did AIB start? Like twenty nine, two thousand nine. No, 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 no. Two thousand, two thousand eleven, early two thousand eleven. I think it started. Oh. So AIB started in two thousand eleven, dude. It's two thousand nineteen now. Yeah. Um, straight up, bro to bro question. Hmm. Like money. Like where is that coming from right now? <laughs> Where's my money coming from right yeah. now? So I have actually one of the biggest mistakes that I made was I didn't learn about compound interest early in life. I learned hmm. about it way later. Hmm. When this whole thing happened, I got diagnosed with clinical depression in December. I was like, I need to get out of, I need to get out of this city because hmm. everybody in this city is from the media world, and it's hard to, it's hard to feel better about yourself when everybody else is living a life that you want to. Hmm. So I moved to Bangalore. My friend Kunal Shah, who is in Bangalore, he he told me that why don't you surround yourself with other people who are you know doing things that's not in your domain and it'll really help you. and he said use this time to turn this sadness into fuel for growth later and then that really helped me and he always made me feel like the startup world is something that yeah. i could uh, I, i could I, be I a agree, part bro. of like yeah. knowing you as a guy or yeah. it's uh, your strengths align with that yeah so i moved to bangalore and i started consulting for a few companies there hmm. um and within a couple of months i realized that oh this is it's great <laughs> <laughs> so i was in bangalore I started consulting for a few companies there. Mm. I started thinking of some tech ideas while I was there. I surrounded myself with entrepreneurs from a completely new domain. I met some crazy entrepreneurs there and uh, just surrounded myself with people who were smarter than me in so many other ways. So mm. that was amazing. And within 2-3 months I was like cool if I if I don't have a life in the I was ready to quit a life in the media. Mm. And for, do what? I don't know anything. I just didn't want to be in the public domain. I remember one particular night we were sitting and talking about early days of how I used to be in college and 
that's when I realized that oh my mum's a my mum works in a bank my dad works in HR I I have no business being in the media world at all forget being a comedian and a successful one at that and then starting something that revolutionizes the way we do court so people say I have no business being in this world and then I was like oh why am I beating myself up I mean it sounds simple but this realization takes months that you can get up again so that was pretty that was pretty amazing i love bangalore and uh, now i'm here i know at some point in life i'll do something in tech because the games they play in bangalore are so much better than the games we play like here. for example the, dude bombay plays status games mm. bombay plays main itna cool hu bro yeah bombay is all about status if if someone is number 1 someone has to be number 2 mm. but bangalore because i mean there is some element of status games in bangalore but largely they play wealth games right the investor and the startup game is wealth game which is your success will be my success if i invest mm. in you if collaboration you become, collaboration how can we help help each other so bangalore is fantastic in that sense and bangalore is so optimistic the worst case in bangalore is you know uh so much better than the worst case in bombay so i love that about bangalore because yeah. people it's very much like mumbai in the sense you know how people come to bombay to become something in the world of mm. media come from small towns mm. etc etc with the hope and dream in their eyes mm-hmm. so bangalore is very similar to that you meet people who have come from all walks of life who all have come with just one germ of an idea and they come and they meet random people i know i've met founders who are just living with their employees in one house mm. and they would just talk cool shit yeah. literally every day the con- their conversation would be like did you read this article did you read this theory did you read what this yeah. philosopher has said and i was just like what fucking world are you in yeah. you know what the fuck i would discuss isne kitna kya ye banaya iska jo ye unfunny hai aur isne dekha isko twitter pe kya bola i was like what the fuck is this life in mumbai mm. which was really nice i think yeah. dude like i study a lot of yoga that's yeah. the one change that's happened huh. like in the last two years huh. and uh, yoga cons- the world of yoga considers hmm. bangalore as a key spiritual capital for the world as well oh really yeah and they say that wherever there is like spirituality there's also always learning and knowledge yeah. and positivity yeah. so all everything you're saying actually encapsulates that same thought yeah, you felt that you felt that like more better energy in bangalore oh yeah way better energy yeah. i love the energy there i love the i i think uh, yeah bangalore gave me hope and spirit and everything yeah what what uh, spiritual changes have you seen dude like in this low phase spirituality is not bhagwan god religion yeah. spirituality is internal self awareness you know self awareness like, has gone up way more i yeah. did intense therapy in the last one year i know a lot more about myself i realized that i'm dependent on external validation far too much mm. i need to get the fuck over that which yeah, i think to some extent i have it's a social media outcome you know it's an illness that gets to all social media influencers yeah. bro it's also cuz dad didn't hug me uh, <laughs> as a child <laughs> Uh, I'll I'll hug you dude. Yeah, Come no, on. shut up. Just stay the fuck away. Um spiritual changes I don't know if this is spiritual or no. But one of the I mean patience is a virtue, right? And I think that's one of the things I learned last year is that life is extremely long. Mm. Life is crazy long and life is what you make of it and it's so everything is in your all the clichés are so true. How old are you? I'm 32 now. that's young bro as young i've also been doing this for it feels like i've been doing this for 20 years yeah. but it's been like 10 years i've been doing this but you're yeah. hopeful about the rest of oh yeah yeah, yeah 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 see how wisdom isn't number of years of experience wisdom is number of experiences a year mm. so i am so grateful that i had the last 5 years i have seen so many ups and downs that i feel like abhi abhi tu kya tu kya karega mere ko mm-hmm. main sab kar diya already mm-hmm. you know what can what can life throw at you next so yeah, so yeah patience and the realization that life is life is long and you don't have to be in a hurry you don't have to, you don't need everything today i don't know if this is spiritual awakening no it is dude. but yeah patience as a virtue is something that i've learned immensely now mm-hmm. and i feel like uh, what we often don't do because of the world of social media we often don't play long term games we don't mm-hmm. realize boon boon se banta hai sagar mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying yeah it's a, it's a, it's the little stuff that eventually mm-hmm. makes makes a big difference dude what did you learn about people through all the lows that happened i'm sure a lot of people just like cut you off and shit like that happened yeah and one thing i learned about people was that most people are gray you know um the thing about uh being called a public failure is that I was lucky that many many people came to me and told me about how they think they are immensely flawed as people and uh that was really nice. Um I Touchwood I didn't have a lot of people who cut me off and stuff like that. I think Touchwood I've been very lucky that 
I've, I have I have some solid ass friends, dude, who were there through thick and thin, and they were extremely kind and nice. And I'm here because of that reason. And also made new friends. Um, I I was lucky. I didn't have any people that cut me off. I think anybody who drops you in a time of need, just f- those guys, dude. Yeah. There's no point. Do you want me to? I mean, as again, because I was your trainer, know you from 2015. Dude, I'm talking to you now at such a deep level. After a long time, yeah, we've not had time. such a deep conversation in yeah, a while. Yeah, yeah. We used to. You were too in a bad zone back in the day, dude. I feel yeah. you're on a much better zone right now. Yeah, in life. I'm a lot more self-aware, and I realize. You, you know, dude, you like while talking to you, you used to just switch off into tension. Not yeah. even like switch off as an arrogant thing. You used to just be so tense about life yeah. that you used to switch off into your zone about thinking, creating business strategy, thinking yeah. about your next day. But yeah. now you take a moment and just sit in one place. Yeah, because yeah. life is very. It's just been a year. <laughs> it's just since the last year. It's just been a year. It feels like it's been ten years. Mm. You know, it feels like so long. And I'm like, oh, it's just been a year. Mm. Cool. It's fine. Everything's. Yeah, most people need patience. Lot of people accuse this these tense mental states uh-huh. as being some form of arrogance. Do you think that there was some form of arrogance back in the day? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I see. There's two. I have two comments to make here. One is we often look at arrogance as a bad thing, which is if someone is someone takes too much pride in what they think they're great at. Uh, it's not necessary. I mean, the second you start looking at arrogance as a bad thing, what what's actually happening is you are being envious of mm. something, right? Judging, judging. You're judging. Someone. You're judging someone. So that's not necessarily good. If you think someone else is arrogant. Right at that way, if you point at someone, four fingers are pointing at you. That's all I'll get. If you think someone is arrogant, actually you are being judgmental. A, mm. B. Most most uh, cockiness or arrogance is largely a manifestation of its projection. Right? No one means to be arrogant. It's just they're they're inherently insecure that they double down on what they think. Yeah. Um, you are yeah. a more secure guy now. Now I'm I'm a lot more secure. Now I'm a lot more happier being like. बट अर्लियर दी एक्सेप्टेंस एंड आई एम इडियट वॉज अ लॉट हार्डर टू डू बिकॉज डीप डाउन यू जेनुअनली फेल्ट लाइक यूर इडियट सो यू डू एनीथिंग टू प्रोटेक्ट दैट फीलिंग दैट्स वाई पीपल आर एरगेंट पीपल नॉट एरगेंट बिकॉज यू वॉन्ट टू मेक अदर पीपल फील गुड पीपल आर एरगेंट और बैड बिकॉज दे वॉन्ट टू प्रोटेक्ट दर ओन सेल्फ स्टीम सो आई थिंक नाउ आई एम आई एम लॉट मोर सिक्योर आई एम स्टिल स्टिल इन सिक्योर बट इज इनहेरेंटली इन सिक्योर बट आई एम लॉट मोर सिक्योर नाउ बिकॉज आई एम लाइक इट्स फाइन यार लाइक दिस मोर टू लाइफ देन Than just productivity of work. Yeah, life is about. You're kind of in that investor mode right now. So I tell all my boys, the guys who are recording this, Rajesh has been with me from the start. You met him like two, three years back. Mm. I tell all of them that you're a fighter pilots, but there will be a stage in your career where you have to stop being a pilot, come down to the control room, and have five pilots under you. Yeah, yeah which is yeah, what yeah. you're doing right now. You're that yeah, safe. You yeah. were a pilot, and now you've come back into yeah, control room. Yeah. What do you see in potential pilots that you want to work with? Those potential young kids. What do you go like? Okay, ha, ye na door jayega. This might sound wrong, but I think. So when I do my interviews now to hire kids, I often ask them, "Where do you grow up? What was childhood like?" I discuss childhood a lot more now. If there are people who have some sort of brokenness, it's usually an indication of drive. Right? Yeah. People who are immensely driven. I love those people. um i also am very blunt in asking them where what do you want to do in life then i'm also very clear in saying that this is the role i want you to play in my life hmm. and you tell me what do you want to learn from me learn that and leave hmm. because the indian mentality is often oh if i hire you then you are now mine you know what i'm saying we have a very bonded labor an old old school type of way of working we But don't or uh, or family huh? do, like at least i have that with my boys what? my boys are family for life The family for life, and sometimes in family you just gotta let them go, dude. You gotta you gotta let them uh, see their own true potential. So now my approach to working with people is: you're not gonna work with me forever. You're only gonna work with me for some time. I want you to go do your own thing, and when you go do your own thing, I want to be a I want to be a part of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is a much better place yeah, to be. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, that's the same logic, dude. It's family. Yeah. Enthusiasm is great. I love lazy geniuses. This is something that I really like. Um, I think hard work is overrated. I think laziness is underrated. We'll agree to disagree on that, yeah. but go on. Yeah, let me explain. Uh, our perception of hard work is uh, quantity. It's not. It's not quality. Uh, lazy geniuses are people with fantastic ideas, uh, and they'll find the shortest, quickest way to achieve mm. whatever is required. Uh, and I think laziness is severely underrated in today's day and age. Um, I'll give you. I'll give you an example. Right. I wanted a channel that. 
would I wanted my own distribution. Okay. And I really enjoyed gaming. But what I think really is working for me is the fact that gaming is a great content hack. Mm. Right? Because I have a very fun personality. If I play games, it will translate to that. Mm -hmm. So I can create a video a day because of because of gaming. It's Jugaad content. It's Jugaad. So this, I think, is a product of me being a lazy, lazy person. Um, so I, I would always pick a lazy geni genius over someone who's, who's nice, but it, it takes them a little, little while longer. So... Um, I really like people who, uh, one of the things I often ask is tell me something that, this is a question I ask in the interview, tell me something that, that a lot of your friends disagree with you about. What is an opinion about that you have that you feel is some, most people disagree with you about? That really shows radical thinking to me. Um, that really shows people who are slight, slightly more fearless. Um, that really helps because one of the things that we have to recognize when people want to work with us, they usually want to work with us because we are us. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm always worried about, are you just here because it's going to be cool working with me or what is, what is this thing? So I would want people who are around me to be fearless in that sense. That, all, that really helped it at AIB. Uh, I love putting young people in shoes that they shouldn't be in at that time. What What's a deal breaker for you? Like with a young person? You've hired him and then he's done something fucked up and then what's a deal breaker? I just think uh, refusal to learn or I think close-mindedness is 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 a big problem for me. Hmm. I think people who are willing Rigid. to adapt and yeah, rigidity is a, is a, is a big problem. Hmm. I think people who are willing to adapt, people who are malleable are, if your brain is a rock, hmm. I don't like it. If your brain is a sponge, that's way better hmm. because new ideas can't penetrate a rock. Mm. You know, sponges just absorb. Mm -hmm. That's what I love. What's your What's your take on like physical fitness now? I, I just my take is that I really need it, and I would like to. Are do you it doing more. any physical fitness? This is the trainer in me to you talking. Yeah, so I put out a post on Instagram on 9th of October, saying my next year I'll have a jawline. So now I've been two and a half months. I've dropped eight kilos now. Uh, it's been It's been steady. So I because Kya karta? diet karta hai. Or I try to walk every day. Mm. For me, the first priority was I'm like, it's better to play a long race because I knew I know what I'm like. I will do three months ham and then I'll and then I'll give up. So this time I was like, I won't do ham. I need to do this for a year, right? So first four months I'll be slow. Mm. Then when I need to up it, I'll up it later. So this is a new thing that I'm doing. Mm. I don't I don't really work out as such. Should you when I was training you, you're a physically strong guy. Yeah. So I remember that um, your like your progress was really fast, way faster, way better than I expected. This is coming as your trainer. Yeah. Why didn't you gravitate towards weight training, or why don't you right now? Because you saw the change it made in your body. No, it's not that I don't. I really like weight training, and I still and I still will. Um, I just know that from my past experiences that I I I'm much better at sprints than marathons. Mm. So this time I just want to make sure that I that I don't that I'd rather do the fast, you know, marathon may end me all of both fast back there. Hmm. They save their energy up so they can sprint at the end. I want to try that this time. If I'm supposed to lose 50 kilos, I would rather leave the last 15 to be done in the last two months than lose that 15 in the first two months and then burn out later. Mm -hmm. I'd rather do that. So this time I'm, I'm not working out severely. I do some cardio and I just diet. And I lose a steady four kilos a month, three kilos a month. I'll do it for two, three months. And then eventually I'll, I'll start speeding it up as and when it's required. Yeah, really. I think that's better. I'm also, st I'm also starting to vlog about yeah. it, which is great because yeah. it's public accountability. When you date someone, when you work with someone or mm. when you train someone physically, you mm. get to know them on a very deep level. Yeah, it's unfortunate. Yeah. I know you like really deeply. Just, One thing that worked for you back in the day, I remember you had lost like close to 50 kgs or something then, dude. Yeah. You're a really determined guy. Yeah. And you're an analyzer. And then look what happened. <laughs> hmm. That's fine. Uh, but you're, dude, like life is all about ups and downs. I genuinely believe that. Hmm. Okay. Uh, but you're also a really analytical dude, hmm. uh, which is a curse also because it's then terrible. you start overthinking shit. Yeah. Dude, what are the thoughts in your head usually right now in life? Are you thinking about, okay, where's the next revenue stream coming from? Where's the next fitness growth coming from? Are you thinking about like growth? Are you analyzing life? What's what's your zone? Uh, the number one priority for me is creative flow. I want uh, some certain projects that I want to finish. I've been writing a movie for very long. I want to finish that. Second is trying to figure long term. Um, I think I can help startups. I think I think there's uh, there's some interesting play. I don't want to talk too much about it, but there's some interesting things that that are brewing. I'll hopefully start my podcast and people will know more about it. Sab kuch ko dega ke mein <laughs> <laughs> For sure. I want everything, babe. <laughs> uh, dude, 
I mean, when you are successful, there's a lot of people who want to see you fail also. Of course. Uh, what do you have to say to all those people who are looking at you right now and saying, "Chal, story khatam." But nahi no, khat. It's so it's so clear. It's not over. Mm. <laughs> it's just been forty five days since I came back. So I don't even know why. Okay, think I don't. You you want to let your work speak? I don't. I just feel like uh, I I don't even think about those people. I don't. I really don't. When you are so deep in, I'm thinking about literally as I'm talking. I'm thinking about has Raven finished the edit for tomorrow's upload. That's all I'm thinking right now. I don't have time for those people. I I don't care. I feel sad for those folks who who are, I so I'll give you an analogy, right? In the comedy industry, when you're in the open mic circuit, you are extremely like Kunal Kamra is a fantastic example. I love Kunal Kamra. He's a he's a good friend, a great guy, but he used to be so bitchy in the earlier days. when he was on the open mic circuit when he wasn't as big as he is right now and today he's just the nicest person because once success hits you you will realize that you don't need to be bad to other people to feel good about yourself you mm-hmm. can feel that on your own so when i see people saying shit in the comment section i go like oh you are trying to gain some sort of status mm-hmm. by doing so so you haven't found your game and that's that's sad um i don't i don't care anymore फिनिश तो बहुत बार बोला यार रोज के बाद भी बोला था फिनिश फिर अगले साल सचिन लता के बाद भी बोला था फिनिश ठीक है आई रियली एंजॉय आई हैव नो बिजनेस बीइंग हियर बट आई विल बी हियर एंड देन इट्स योर प्रॉब्लम नाउ डू व्हेन यू आर लो राइट नाउ इन लाइफ हु इज योर इमोशनल सपोर्ट इफ देयर इज नो रिलेशनशिप डू यू गो बैक टू योर मॉम डैड आह नो आई एम नॉट आई मॉम आई एम क्लोजर टू मॉम देन डैड बट यार माय क्लोजेस्ट फ्रेंड्स आर देयर इज रेगा देयर इज अमशुला देयर इज कनीज अम देन देयर इज द एक्सेलेंट सर्कल निराली कनन अम they were sati i have some f-ing solid as friends what, dude what does therapy give you that friends uh, don't i don't think either it's i don't think it's an either or i think uh, it really great friends will can do be therapeutic um but therapy is like it's like going to the gym right it's like you just do it right. it's it's like going to the gym for your head you don't therapy it's uh, hanging out with your friends isn't Isn't like in your timetable necessarily. You don't look at it as this is the thing I have to do. So therapy is a great way to again be like. It's like when you sit and reorganize your computer. Mm-hmm. You know, two weeks में एक बार करना जरूरी है. So therapy is like that. You come, you sit in front of one person whose job it is to listen to you, and while just while processing your thoughts, a lot of things start aligning themselves, which you're often not able to do with friends. I think not. I th- I don't think my friendships yet are at such a point where. I can be one thousand percent honest. It's the best friendships I've ever had, but I still think there's still some layer of there's some layer that you can't be the most brutally honest. Um, and a therapist is completely detached from your life. Mm. With friends, friends they're not. Their friends are very much a part of your life, yeah. so you can't be hundred percent objective with them. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Dude, I think this is the major reason. You know, you said therapy is like gym. But yeah. then, how you can keep dumbbells at home also, or you can keep that squeezy thing of for your forearms? Yeah. Uh, Journaling. And meditation. And meditation. Yeah. I remember telling you back in the day that yeah. you embrace meditation. Yeah, yeah. I'll still tell you that. I don't know how much. Yeah. I so I just think that meditation is. I I use Headspace all the time now. So to be meditation is uh, just no stimulation time. You Dude, know. you're staying quiet and observing your own thoughts. Yeah. Now, first fifteen minutes, those thoughts may be negative. Yeah. But the last five minutes, do you observe those thoughts so clearly? Yeah. I say, oh, okay, that's the issue. That's yeah. my implicit memory. My dad did that to me when I was six years old. Correct. That's why I'm thinking that's like I'm this thinking now. That's why I'm thinking like this. Yeah. So, meditation is great. Yeah. Um, I think just a general, uh, as a generation, we forgot to just sit quietly and quietly. We've uh-huh. forgotten it because even if there's a ten second cut here, I'm just on my phone and everything is. Yeah. Um, so I started head spacing where I just. Like thirty minutes before sleeping, you're just no stimulation. Mm. Otherwise, previous habit uh, for one year, I used to keep the laptop on with one episode of The Office running while falling asleep. Mm. Now I can't do it. I'm just like, no, I yeah, just dude, want to not. When think. I was training you back in the day, it wasn't just f-ing training your muscles. Yeah, I I put up blinds in your room. I remember yeah. because you used to sleep so unhealthy. I'm gonna open a story here, which I don't know if you've spoken about. I think you have on your Instagram. Huh. There was a phase where you almost died. Oh yeah. So what was that? There was a phase I almost died. I was I had acute sleep apnea. मतलब acute sleep apnea is where I was so overweight. I was two hundred and forty five kilos. That's was, the heaviest you've been. Heaviest I've ever been. Two hundred and forty five kilos. Acute sleep apnea is where when you're sleeping in a certain position, 
because i was so fat not enough oxygen would reach my brain and my brain would go through a seizure and wake me up in the middle of sleep and so, you're a big guy what how tall are you i'm 6 3 i'm 189 cm so i would wake up four times every night because i couldn't sleep not enough oxygen was going through my brain um so then i went to get that checked and they put cameras inside my inside inside me to make sure all my internal organs are okay and everything and my neck muscles collapsed at that time so i stopped breathing hmm. so i had to get they had to take the camera out of me to resuscitate me um so it took some f***ing five and my body went into involuntary thrusting right so i just wanted to yank the thing out but that was dangerous so six doctors had to hold me down i had to take it down from my from my gut slowly then i stopped breathing then i had some issue with my lungs so i was in the icu for 6 days uh this was after the roast this is after the roast like 2 days after the roast because during the roast was 50 days of sitting in one place and eating and writing that's all i did i used to eat 10 ice creams a day at that time it was wow. insane ice cream after ice cream just eating eating my feelings away eating my anxiety away um so during that time i temporarily i was i was dead cuz i just stopped breathing but somehow they woke me up and uh and somehow i recovered after that. after that was the time where i was like okay now it's it's time to pack my <laughs> shit and get my shit in order yeah Damn. fun times do you remember anything about almost dying i Or remember going i remember getting anesthesia then i remember waking up with pipes in my nose and like if you see this mark here on my nose yeah. that is from that is from the pipe being inside my nose and my my, my gullet I remember opening my eyes and seeing mom just smiling at me like a and the smile it's like a you just can come home wow you are i'm going to fuck your life <laughs> it was that kind of it wasn't a, i'm so happy to see you alive like i'm i'm going to kill you marne wale ha it was funny when i saw rega after that and i finally met dad and i opened my eyes and the first time i saw all these doctors come in front of me and they're all waving <laughs> and i couldn't talk to them but they all were like sir we're big fans how did you make the alia video <laughs> and i'm like can you fucking get me out of the icu first wow. in, before asking me for trivia and they all took a selfie with me it was very funny <laughs> uh i was there for 7 8 i was there in the icu for 5 6 days and they finally moved me out yeah. and it was fine dude that yeah. thing you said about eating habits which led to the 245 kgs yeah what else was going on in your day it's not just the ice cream oh dude Uh, it was sleep apnea because I was so overweight. Sleep apnea would mean mean I would have broken sleep in the night. No, no, I'm I'm asking about the overweight. Huh? Like one was the ice cream. Huh? What else was I eating? Yeah, what else were you eating? What else were you doing? Oh, I was eating non-stop. I would wake up. Everything was first of all from restaurants. No, I'm not. I wasn't going to eat anything at home. Um, I remember. You know how you feel when you're full and when you're light. When you're light, you just have way more energy in you. I don't remember for a period of like 2 years where I was ever not full. Every meal was like you're going to eat till you want to sleep immediately. Mm. Um I should just eat a crazy amount. Like a buffet meal and every meal. Oh, every meal was a buffet meal. There's no concept of breakfast, lunch, dinner. It was breakfast, second breakfast, lunch, second lunch, in the evening also eat something in the night and worst is staying up late in night dude. Then you're just at at night so you just want something in your mouth to constantly stimulate you. So Why? I say Oh, I don't know to eat eat all all my stress or anxiety away. I think that was that was it. Do you do you like eat and then think of other things while you're eating? Uh I I think what I I still need to understand my relationship with food very deeply, but I think uh food is an activity that goes great with my thinking, you're right. It just feels nice when I'm Eating. I don't know what it is, dude. No, I'll, I'll give you one tip as a trainer, and this is uh. something that worked like magic for me. Okay, conscious eating. So every time you're eating, ठीक है, जो खाना है खा, but look at your food and feel every bite, feel how the food uh. is feeling, and just be in the food while you. Oh, eating. I to inhale my food. Yeah. I to don't even feel. I to, sometimes I'll just go to the kitchen blindly. It's a, it's. I just go to the kitchen sometimes, and I open drawers to see what is there to eat. This I'm not even thinking. This is fuck all. It's a, it's a, it's a habit. Sometimes you just open your fridge to see what is there. I didn't come to the fridge with any purpose. I just came to the fridge. Now open. I'm like now I want to eat something. I think um, yeah. I think smoking was also that only. Just the need to constantly have some sort of oral fixation thing. Yeah. yeah. Is your relationship with food getting better? I think so. Now. So here's how it used to be, right? When I used to work out or when I used to lose weight earlier. 
it was really annoying to be on a diet mm. and when i would cheat i would then bin cheat which mm. is cheating is like if i say i'm on a diet or dopahar ko maine do bite chawal ka kha liya mm. my mindset used to be as a full day anyway i'm mm. off keto mm. this mm. i'm just going to eat whatever this. i whatever it was very difficult as a trainer yeah cuz i'm like oh i'm off keto now can just eat whatever the fuck that you want yeah. so that day would be like aaj cheat day aaj marte jo ye khana but now that mindset has slightly changed now i'm like it's okay you don't even if you're cheating just have a normal meal so i even when i'm cheating now i still don't do i still cut out sugar uh, my cheating now is if i'm eating dal chawal roti sabji which is not the worst dude it's not bad um so so that's the one big mindset change which is great yeah dude mm-hmm. i feel small changes is what gets you there man yeah small again changes. as a trainer like yeah. just dude one thing that worked for me i remember when i had begun my weight loss journey was the same thing i told you ki mm-hmm. yaar pick one thing cut that out Yeah. Pick sugar, cut it out. But yeah. then be religious about that. Have discipline. The discipline you carry into your hustle with YouTube, carry that into your yeah. eating also. It's a long term game. Yeah, bro, it's a sure. one year, two year, yeah. three years. Just gotta keep doing it. You know how you said you're walking a lot. Yeah. Uh, I know you play badi a lot also. I love badi. That's the best habit. Badminton yeah, bad or dance. sport. Any yeah. any dance, sport, whatever you yeah. enjoy doing, where you don't get to know that you're working out. Working out. Badminton is fucking amazing. Yeah. Any competitive. You're seeing weight loss because of that, no? Yeah. I yeah. play badminton two three times a week now. Good bro. Uh, so that's actually the real big yeah. cardio bump. Yeah. Um, that's the excessive calories yeah. that go out of your body. The badminton, badminton two hours of badminton. Weight training, करना भाई. Like you'll. करूँगा. It'll, it'll, it'll. It's you know your body is made for weight training. करो करो. Genetics are. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Yeah. I'll do it. I'll fix start. I'm very happy with the pace of pace yeah. at which I'm going. Yeah. I'd rather do this for. Five months, then burn out in five months. So I'll get. I know I've done weight training, and I know the results. Yeah. So isn't weight loss also a process of like uh, a product of shocking your body, right? Yeah. So bit. I feel like now let me plateau with this level, then I'll introduce weight training so that again I get I get a big bump after that. Yeah. But tabi karte. Yeah. Dude, see. you do realize that a lot of kids who are fighting obesity in India today are looking up to you as like uh, an example. Why right? don't look at me? <laughs> just don't just look at any anybody there's millions of other people just look at what them. what's your take on body shaming what do you want to tell those kids who are body shamed at school and college um what do i want to tell them man i myself have been processed a lot of the bullying that i went through as a kid dude dude i used to go to school through a this slightly slum area okay mm. i think one of the things that a lot of adults who were overweight as kids haven't done is process the just the level of trauma that you went 100%. through as a, as as a kid i used to go through a slum on my way to school and i have now i've discovered memories that i've suppressed and when i used to go through the slum the slum kids would sometimes pull my pants on and be like show me your dick i've heard fat people have small dicks and which was like i was now as adults i'm like holy shit i just suppressed this whole memory as a child i never processed it most people don't process it most people don't ever forgive yourself forgive themselves because um, you take that experience and you make it about i am terrible there's something wrong with me and most people don't process that shit mm-hmm. so i think if i if i was one thing i want to tell overweight kids who are who are being bullied is just sit down and cry it out dude because i know our immediate this thing is to shut down and just try and protect your self esteem in any yeah. way possible especially men dude men just mm-hmm. have zero skills to handle their own emotional or to vent or to vent you can't you can't vent also you can't cry you can't vent you can't go to anyone to talk to yeah. because your bros will also be like hey, hey, hey. yeah bros are the ones who are ruining your life dude <laughs> bros are the ones who fucking don't fucking treat you well that's why so many boys are like i i have re- i'm i make really good friends with girls you know why because they have an emotional range of, of that's bigger than a teaspoon mm. with men you can discuss fucking girls and that's about it there's nothing else can you discuss with men that freely sport maybe sport Oh great well done good <laughs> dude, for you Okay coming back to 2016 when I was training you uh-huh. you yourself had told me that dude I want to lose weight not because of the physical aspect but because my thinking will change Oh yeah but because my thought process will change Yeah and you felt a difference in your thought process yeah. for sure yeah. So would Confidence. some would you want to tell those kids somewhere that bro just get into this habit of playing badminton twice a week or something like that just for like a more positive thought process I think it's a me- losing weight is I always used to look at it more as a physical it's a painful physical exercise but it's equally a painful mental exercise if you want to keep the weight off long term hmm. um like i most of the times i'm cheating i'm not even recognizing that i'm not cheating because i'm hungry i'm cheating because my mind is you're asked. bored 
your board or your mind is being indisciplined right mm. now so mastering your brain is far more important and i to me mastering your brain requires a lot of emotional processing yeah. i realize that i i think my body wants to be fat i think deep down i don't de- think i deserve happiness that's the reason why i still want to remain overweight it's that sort of shit that um that sticks with you that you're never able to process yeah. you i i think as, when you are bullied as a kid you believe that you don't deserve happiness because the whole world told you that you don't deserve happiness so your body's also like okay why the i'm not going to let you lose weight yeah. i'm going to make you stay overweight so yeah. it's no, it's as much emotional yeah. processing as i feel emotional processing and thought processes are an outcome of the people you hang out with and the content you consume online we didn't have youtube growing up and all but i feel kids some of today, it some of it but some of it is just see humans unlike animals hmm. jab bachcha paida hota hai animals mein bachcha paida hota hai 3 second mein wo chal raha hai hmm. okay is is sticky or whatever it is mm. but they're walking mm. in the first week they know how to get, gather their own food and whatever the fuck not human children are the only ones who are externally dependent for the first few years of their life mm. and which is i think is a huge flaw in our species mm. which means all a lot of the damage that you have to do to this kid is done in the yeah. first few years um if you don't if you don't make this child feel secure enough it's damage is done so yeah. everybody is some damage to some degree 100%. not because of anything else not because the parents were not nice parents are trying their best yeah. but because probability is such that kuch na kuch to ho jayega parents galtiyan karte hain sometimes of course everybody makes errors um so you have some uh, processing to do anyways yeah some of it is some of it is just the way this is our species is some of it is surrounding society yeah. who you are around uh it's all that kind of stuff but you don't know what thing affects you how in the in the in long the run dude for sure bro one incident could change the way you feel about yeah. anything yeah um so yeah. you can never you can never tell dude a uh, quick story connecting to your daddy issues uh-huh. uh dude as a kid mm. my dad all my life mm. like he in a playful way but it mm. was still like a thing in a playful way used to tell me no you won't amount to anything you'll probably end up being like a security guard somewhere and all that's like that's hilarious uh, sorry that's hilarious <laughs> yeah so wow, when i don't that's crazy traumatic yeah. what all, all my child, i don't hold anything against him <laughs> i have a great relationship and he supported beer biceps ah. through and through ah. i remember coming to He's train he's waiting for the security agency to open no up. no no i mean maybe because the business <laughs> mind is like flying high but you build weight and then you go protect people <laughs> <laughs> but dude all my life and it was somewhere he was coaching me also ki bro please work hard you know uh-huh. and then it became this madness about hustle dude because uh-huh. when i turned 22 i was so determined ki i want to uh-huh. prove my childhood wrong yeah because as a kid you really think i'm going to turn into security guard mm. when you turn 22 you're like dude now i'm like determined to like mm. live up to that kids mm. doubts we yeah. live up and break those kids doubts yeah so like security guard i mean it's it sounds disparaging but for a lot of people security guard job is like a 100%. huge step up in life yeah. you know but um, dude like yeah. i feel that issues yeah. are that 22 to 26 age bracket you have to break these molds somewhere and i feel even you've done the same you've broken a lot of molds yeah. that was your hustle phase in aib that's yeah. what i said respective one that's what i picked up from you also while training you hmm. i picked up your early career mentality what i i used to always asking bro what were you thinking when you started how were you thinking of expansion and all that so i think even you've done that well bro but yeah. i also believe huh. that one reason my training with you worked was because you had that influence of me like pushing you being positive giving you like positivity constantly hmm. as a as a trainer i had to do this in a subtle way hmm. because i knew your mindset at the beginning i couldn't like load on all my positivity all my fitness on you so it was a oh slow... that was not the whole thing oh, <laughs> it felt pretty intense it got it got it got <laughs> more later hmm. uh dude but trust me again i'll tell you this and this is coming from a former fat kid myself hmm. uh that thought process thing that you said that's ace What's like the thought process that when you lose weight your thought uh, process changes drastically yeah. it's ace and i feel just for that yeah kids should work towards it i'm not saying oh, become, 100% become, get a six pack become fit but work towards it that process will change your thought the process process yeah it's it's i you feel so much more confident and you you believe you are something in the world all of a sudden yeah you know 100% yeah so 100% anyway i'm looking forward to october 9 2020 <laughs> we should do another episode of yeah. this podcast then would you uh, would you call me mr toxic positivity i you're f- the worst <laughs> i would call you get the f- out of my face yeah <laughs> no, but it's good dude i'm happy i'm happy your shit's shit's working well you would i told you you would have you would have done it then only what did you see back in the day you just really really wanted it dude you you were desperate for it and 
you can't you can't stop someone who really really wants something yeah you know so um, the fact that you used to get drunk and with your friends and message me saying on train me that's when i was like oh this kid is really wants this hunger yeah hunger is like the my best hires have been those right yeah. devaya devaya is the head writer of or was the head writer of aib the only reason i had him was because he gave a copy test by three different names <laughs> <laughs> and i realized it months later i was like all three are the same people he's like i just want to apply again and again even if one got rejected yeah. so i'm like this sounds good dude the hunger is exactly the same as it was when i was 22 and the 22 year old ranveer wants to thank you for the opportunity man really appreciate it uh thanks for the podcast i'll be linking tanmay's new channel down below all the social yeah, media yeah check handles. it out go subscribe go subscribe <laughs> go subscribe do it do it do one it. quick last message for the world from tanmay bhat what have you learned from life one quick last message uh life uh, duniya Oh, hey. <laughs> <laughs> no, life is long. Life is incredibly long. Uh, play, play long-term games. Everything isn't about now. Even though the world might make you feel like everything's gonna happen now, just life is very long. And take your time. Uh, it's all f-ing cliches, yeah. <laughs> it's good. Sometimes yeah. you need cliches in life. Yeah, just make games and have fun playing it. Cool. Then my butt on the Ranveer show. We will see you later, guys.